honored to have uh, as our guest speaker this moment. Yeah. All right, uh, the doctor of comedy, Dr. Hen Sack. to do for the lives of our children of color, yeah. our young men is about to turn the whole city Ooh. of King County upside yeah. down. Yeah. 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 that says people who laugh mm -hmm. live longer. Amen. Yeah. So I have a responsibility to at least increase your life for 30 more minutes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, we, we, we at church, you know, I, I feel I feel comfortable. So, you know, um, let first let me give a shout out to my grandbaby. Yeah. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. My wife, okay. and my daughter, boyfriend, and family. Don't nobody laugh. That's right. Okay. They better be hitting their knees. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. There'll be some serious stuff. But you know, so we all church folks, so we're gonna talk about church for a minute, because you know uh, I gotta get some stuff off my chest about y'all. Um, you know, because we always touch name, touch it, touch name, touch name. Mm. You know, y'all you know, you know about that. Y'all gotta touch name. Anybody ever been to a touch your neighbor church? Yeah. <laughs> touch your neighbor. Oh, yeah. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. <laughs> First of all, you ain't got to explain to me. <laughs> I touched the pastor's table. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, you know, so, so, you know, I'm, I'm just sitting to touch it. You know what I'm saying? I, I am. I know y'all might not, you know, I'm just sitting to touch it. I'm going to touch neighbor, touch neighbor, touch neighbor. I, I'm not even speaking to my wife. You want me to touch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, so we're we going to do one touch. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to move on. So I need y'all to smile at the person, and I don't care if they're yours or you got three more payments. <laughs> but just touch them and smile at them. Touch them. I need you to touch them. I can see them. Touch them and smile at them and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor. Do your breath stand. Do your breath stand. Because what are you talking about? Because that's a serious issue in the church. In this church, but I am so sick of y'all sitting next to me saying these heavy words. Like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'd be like, you sit next to me every Sunday with your mouth smelling like that. You trying to tell me you can't taste that? That is in your stomach. Your Adam apple is burning. And if you ain't laughing, you the one who's talking about Man, I hope I don't get Deacon Smith. You know what I'm saying? I said, but I ain't going to say 
sit up here and take all this. I'm going to fake fall. I'm going to fall. I am willing to pass out on the tongue. Doc. I'm not going to do that. But Doc, I fell. You know what Deacon Smith did? He said, what's up? Power wash your mouth with some smoke or something. <laughs> they tell you not to swallow, but you need to eat with the You need to stir up the gift. <laughs> <laughs> that's the enemy. It'll shift you on it. It'll shift, it'll shift your conversation. It'll make you forget what you're saying. Talk to somebody with their breast. You know, you be like, Years. Wow. And I get the opportunity to actually travel all over this country. Praise God. It's been, it's been really awesome. It's been really awesome. And so, you know, one thing I've done when I first started doing comedy, I always told myself, I said, I got to stick with some of the things that work for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things that always worked for me was I always saw preachers write their notes down mm -hmm. when they get up and preach, mm -hmm. they got their book. Mm -hmm. So I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> And you're going to see me hit it. But I'm telling y'all, you know, I, I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm just thankful for life. But, you know, have you ever had, like, a thank you Jesus moment? Yeah. yeah. But see, y'all not thinking about the same thank you Jesus moment, I'm thinking. Oh. No, I'm thinking about when you at Target. Oh. And you checking out. Ooh. And that bill is twenty three forty six. Oh, God. Now. And you know you only got 20 on that car. Oh, and you know what? Church is a trip, though. But you know, back in the day.
day we used to march. Choir, march. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's a you know, style of grace. Yeah. Bro, now you got these praise teams. You know? Well. <laughs> They're bullies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lift your hand. <laughs> Tell God, thank you. Wave your arm. No, learn the song. <laughs> I'm sick of you telling me what I need to do. You know what I'm talking about? Learn the song. I think we should be able to boo the praise thing. No, 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 y'all sound great all the time. But they want all that from us. They want this. Oh, worship, I can't. You sound horrible. You know what I'm saying? Church is shift. It's a big shift in church. Things we couldn't do back in the day. Yeah. Like praise dancing. Couldn't mm -hmm. praise dance back in the day. Now I'm cool with praise dancing. I just think it should be an age limit. No, no, no. When you get out of a certain age, you should have to hang up your onesie. If you can get coffee on a discounted McDonald's, you should be praise dancing. She was out there. <laughs> I was like, boo! Boo! I've been sat down for that one, though. <laughs> Like, yo, come on, mother. I'm just saying this should be an age limit. It should be an age limit. It should be an age limit. You know what I'm saying? It should be an age limit. <laughs> I just think it should. I thank God for the mothers in the church. But we ain't got the mothers like we used to have. No. Mm -hmm. no we, see, I'm talking, we need them old women. Yes, we do. I'm talking about this mother. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all don't know about that mother. Y'all see that mother. Right? Y'all see this mother. That's right. With the high heels on and everything. Mothers of the church are now what they're 27, 36. You know what I'm saying? If I might hit 42, we think they old at 42. You know what I'm saying? We need them old school mothers. I'm talking about the ones that used to give you them little pink uh, mitts. They look like everlasting God stop, but they just never go. We just keep sucking. I'm not one at the house right now. It's going to be from like 83. <laughs> Yeah, we do. We need our mothers, because you know my mother was a my mother had four boys. And now my therapist told me if I talk about this, it would help. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna share it because I feel like I'm family. <laughs> so you know my therapist told me if I talk about this, it would help. My mother had four boys. So my mother was, you know, single mother, four boys. My mother was tough, man. My mother being the choir stand and would check you from the choir stage. Right. Everybody knew who was being checked by oh, yeah. like what the mother was doing. She was sitting with us. Shook me up to this day. 
My mother said, I will knock you into next week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, so you trying to tell me I miss Sunday? <laughs> Monday? Tuesday? I don't wake up till Wednesday? <laughs> tell me I done missed all the football games, <laughs> a couple days of work, and I ain't waking up till Wednesday. That's a serious punch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or what's the greatest thing your mama always say to you? I brought you in this <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I'm gone. But she still tanned my mom. <laughs> but that day he came out like he was going to a funeral. Mm -hmm. As he walked out, he was like, <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> hey, Henry, <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I began to walk in, and I happened to look through that crack of that door. Guess mm -hmm. what I saw? Pain. Pain. I saw that pain. I ain't no poem. I did what any other tough fourth grader would do. <laughs> was a belt. Mm -hmm. And she hit everywhere but my belt. <laughs> she was like, Yeah, it was a tough time in my life. Time to start learning my body, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> 
When I got to you know, you know I'm going to when I got to go, you got to get there, don't you? <laughs> if the spirit moves, <laughs> Ain't no reason trying to like thank you. Right. No. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm at age now with me. True though. I'm at me becoming a Myers. Mind my own business. Getting some food. I'm gonna let out a sign of a deadly. Blame it on the person behind me. Whoever looked first, be the one who did it, right? I'm sorry, I'm not the only one that did that now. You know when you let out the sign of a deadly. You know what I'm doing. You know. Clothes. 
kind of right. stuff, and he, when we struggled, and we sitting in the house, and my mother bring out the candles. <laughs> we like, what's the candles? Because right, right. there you go, at 5 o'clock, they hit them lights. <laughs> <laughs> they give it to you till 5, and you ain't make your payment at 5, they will cut your power off at 5. They were crazy enough to get you to 5. Or you be sitting in the house, and, and you try to figure out why your mom got buckets. Yeah. All right. She warming up the water. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And, and because you look outside at five o'clock, you see the dude with the thing doing like this, yeah. cutting that water off. Right. On in the winter, right. <laughs> in the winter, <clears throat> or you sitting up in there, you see her pulling out blankets. You like, yeah, I'm like, what? What's going on? Oh, mm-hmm. it's gonna be cold tonight. Mm-hmm. Cause that heat bill didn't get paid. Mm-hmm. You know, but right. statistically. One of us should have been in prison. Mm-hmm. Come or on. One of us should have been right. dead. That's yeah. what statistically, yeah. right. in the yeah. stati- that's right. statistically, yeah. that's what it says. Right. Now, my little brother, if it was going to be one, I would have been down. <laughs> Diana was, well, was, was rough. <clears throat> but I can, I'm, I'm thankful to say our four boys that my mother didn't have to bury them. Amen. 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 And visit any of them. Amen. 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 Even when my little brother got put in <laughs> Darnell saw the car, they didn't know that when the gas went out, they don't run no more. <laughs> <laughs> so they stole the van and they drove the van all day. The van, the van just stopped running. They, they could not figure out why the van wouldn't run no more. And they got he got uh, arrested. They grabbed him and took him to juvenile. And they, I never forget, they called my mother. And they was like, my oldest brother worked for the juvenile system. So they called my brother and said, hey, your little brother here. We've been trying to figure out where Darnell was all day. <laughs> he ain't been in school. They've been out him and his buddy here riding, driving all day. So they put him in juvie, and my mother said, well, I'm not going to get him. She said, Danny, you handle it how you want to handle it. So we said, well, we, we all can't get him. We said, leave him in there for a the night. But treat him like a suicide victim. Mm. Mm. What they do with suicide victims, they go in and they shake them up every two to three hours. Yeah. They take their shoes and their shoe strings because they think they're going to commit suicide. Yeah. They shook him up. I bet you they hit that room at least six times <laughs> that night. Shook him up. I say that to say that he, he, he dropped out of high school. In fact, he got kicked out of high school. <laughs> he got kicked out of Grand Rapids Public Schools, got kicked out of Kimball Public Schools. <laughs> Finally got his head together, got his GED. Thank God. He's a master barber now. Amen. He owns his own business. He's got people that work for him. All right. Yeah. He's got yeah. He has a, a barber school. Woo, praise God. He teaches kids how to barber. He, he's uh, licensed. Uh, he's licensed that you have to talk to him to even get your license to be a certified barber. Yeah. That's wow. Man. Now, and this is a kid that was a uh, hot mess. <laughs> was bad. We were worried about. We were literally worried that Darnell. We were worried about that. Yeah. Darnell turned out being a great kid. Mm-hmm. Amen. Being a great kid. I'm gonna tell you something. And I'm talking to the young kids. How do you love you? How do you five? That's right. Love your parents. You only get one. That's right. That's all you get. You get one. When mommy gone, it's gonna be tough. When daddy right. gone. It's going to be tough. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we try to make moments. You know, I used to like to do things. My kids have fun, but I, I want to do moments. I want to make memories right. right now. You know what I'm saying? With my kids and stuff. Right. At one time, I didn't think I would want them to even come over the house after they leave. Now I like them over the house. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy them coming over. So I encourage you, love your parents. That's love your parents. It's important. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, my mother just moved back. And... Uh, this is the greatest thing ever for me. You know, sometimes they, you know they older. I'm just talking to young kids now. Some parents, might, sometimes they get on your nerves. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but, but that's just life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's you get right. on your nerves, you get on our nerves. It's, it's, but at the end of the day, they love it. That's right. Amen. And that's Amen. the greatest thing. Is, 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 there's nothing greater than a parent love. Say that. That's right. Amen. Amen. There is nothing greater. You'll never find anything greater than a parent's love. And the craziest thing, you'll never find nothing greater than a mother's love for their child. Nothing. There's nothing greater than that. So I have a mentoring group. And the reason I mentor young boys is because I ain't got none. 
And I got two daughters. <laughs> but I love, I love, I love young men, and I love to see young men succeed because I understand the importance that we need you right. for our future. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well young women are strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, their helpmates, so they, they, their mindset is they can't do nothing but help and do better. That's what women do. Mm -hmm. They survive. They're survivors. If you look with, like with a lion, and the, 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 the male lion don't even hunt. Right. The woman lion goes That's out right. and gets food right. and brings it back. And then got to keep the, 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 the baby, all the babies. And if the baby goes over to the male, the males are eating. Yeah. At a certain age. They don't even want to be bothered with it. That's right. That's the same thing, man. We, 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 so we understand that about young women. But young boys, we have to teach them that you have to be successful. That's right. You have to be great. That's right. If you're not great in, if you're not great in school, so what? Let's find out what you're great at. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to teach young men now that, you know, blue collar. No one teaches the kids uh, electricians no more. Right. Uh, plumbers. That's right. They make six figures a year. A master of plumbers makes six figures a year. Mid six figures. Like 250000 or more. That's what they make. Electricians, they make six figures a year. That's what they do. So I try to encourage kids now, just let, help me, let me find, let me help you find what you're great at. So we can be great. Because there's a time I'm gonna get old. And when I go to McDonald's, I wanna sit like all the old school guys do and sit there and talk and see young folks come in and be like, and look at that, he a plumber. Right. Or look at that, he a doctor. That's right. Or look at him, he's doing this. Or look at that, he's doing that. Or hey, he's a garbage man, but he's great. Right. That's right. Yeah. You ain't blessed because you're a garbage man. That's right. I work for the gas company. Come on. That don't mean I ain't nothing. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I try to, that's what we do. We're about encouraging young men. Uh, I've been given uh, a great opportunity mm -hmm. to be a part of this uh, network with the uh, Kellogg's Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the ones picked out of 1,800 people wow. that applied for it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, praise God. Yeah. 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 them in the back, I was like, you know, it was sort of intimidating when I went to the interview. And I'm not ashamed of my life. I was, I was a CD student. I didn't, I didn't value school. I was just a kid that wanted to keep a 2.0 so I could play football, because I was good at that. After football, I'm, I'm straight. You know, I skate through, and I'll be OK. But to sit there with people with, with doctorate degrees, Master's degrees, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and all of these degrees, and I'm listening, I told Pastor, one of the ones that stuck out to me was a young lady was, she was doing her undergrad, she got her undergrad, and I don't even know what all that stuff meant, I had to ask my daughter, <laughs> I don't know none of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> undergrad, above grad, I just, I was a high school grad, so I didn't know. <laughs> but she was talking about her responsibility, which I thought was, great, was crazy, was she creates all of the programs for women for the food wow. that they eat with Kellogg's. Wow. Wow. Now I'm sitting with somebody that's in an interview for that, but she didn't get it. Wow, come on. Come, come on, on I got it. Yeah. Come on, right. 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 And uh, someone, someone saw a man me to invest in me. And um, I tell anybody, I take favor over a million dollars. And you know, you don't really understand that until you experience it. There you go. Well because said. Well said. We say that, yeah. but until you experience it, yeah. because if you walk to me with a million, yeah. I'm going to take it. Yeah. <laughs> and figure out the favor on the back end. <laughs> 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 Seriously. Right. Right. You don't think like that. But when you experience that someone saw something in you right. and, 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 and stuck their neck off of you. That's right. And the funny thing was, I was telling the pastor in the back, before I got to go into the meeting, this guy came out to grab me for the interview. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh-oh, okay, I'm going with you. I said, okay, so I get up, I start walking, and he touched me on my back, and he said, uh, we know somebody. I said, huh? I didn't want to say nothing about the lady 
that has invested in me because I didn't want to. Okay, Chloe, you know, pat my baby on the back. That's my that my baby right there. But I didn't want I didn't want to say that about the lady that invested in me to no one because you were you were work. You know, you don't want nobody to say, oh, he had this, he had that. So I'm quiet. Uh huh. He was like, and he tapped me on the back, and I said, yeah. He said, we know somebody though. He said, let's go in here and knock this out. Oh, wow. So Favor walked in with me. Yeah. 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 And, and I told him that was like the greatest experience because I, I specifically told those people that was interviewing me that I did not deserve to be here. Mm. And one of the ladies looked at me and said, don't you ever say that again. Don't you wow. She said, the reason you're here mm -hmm. is because you deserve it. You know, I love joking and I love talking to people about laughter and everything, but I always tell people, always try to find something to laugh at. Mm -hmm. right. Because you deal with so much hell. Amen. Amen. You got to find something to give Ooh. you joy. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And laughter. Don't take everything so seriously. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, take some stuff just with a grain of salt. Just mm -hmm. brush, brush it off. I'm a very sensitive guy. I wear my feelings here. People always tell you, oh, you gotta be like a duck, let it roll. That ain't scripture. I ain't saying it. <laughs> 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 that ain't scripture. That ain't, I, I'm sensitive. The Bible tells you to love. Yeah. It don't tell you to be sensitive. I'm, I'm sensitive. I wear my shoulders here. I wear my feelings here. Mm -hmm. But one thing I learned in this in this past six months dealing with this is don't ever believe what you can't do. Right. I'm just a young guy, a CD student, that someone saw something in to help him back in boys. And the only reason I chose to do it was because two men poured into my life. A man named Richmond Jones and a man named Mr. Ruben Smart. They poured into my life. Mr. Madden was a spiritual father. But a man that would just come get me, talk to me, do stuff with me. That was them. And I was like, they did that for me. I owe that to do it for somebody else. Yes. So thank y'all, Pastor. It was an honor, privilege. I know y'all laughed. Hopefully y'all enjoyed yourselves.